welcome to On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway. Now, today I'm taking you back to the reign of Queen Mary I. But on this day in Tudor history, the 21st of September, 1557, Henry Pendleton, theologian, chaplain and friend of Bishop Bonner, was buried at St Stephen's Walbrook in London. Now, you've probably never heard of Henry Pendleton, but I wanted to find out more about him when I found out that he's known for his changing religious beliefs, his strong preaching and the fact that he was shot at in Mary I's reign. In Henry VIII's reign, he was against the Reformed faith, which became known as Protestantism. Then he supported it in Edward VI's reign. And then he converted back to Catholicism in Mary I's reign. Now, we might call him a pragmatist, a survivor, but it seems strange for someone who is a theologian, don't you think? So let me share some facts about Henry Pendleton. Henry Pendleton's birth date is not known, but he came from a Lancashire family and studied at Brasenose College in Oxford. He got his BA in 1542, his Master's in 1544, and went on to get a degree and doctorate in theology in 1552. He was a fellow at the college from 1542 to 1554, vice principal from 1551 to 1552, and senior bursar there from 1553 to 1554. In Henry VIII's reign, he preached against Lutheranism, but then embraced it in Edward VI's reign. He was even appointed as an itinerant preacher with four others, including Lawrence Sanders or Saunders and John Bradford, by Edward Earl of Derby to preach the doctrines of the Reformation in the ignorant and popish parts of the country. In 1552, also in Edward's reign, Pendleton became vicar of Blimhill in Staffordshire. The Catholic Mary I came to the throne in July 1553, and martyrologist John Fox in his chapter on Lauren Saunders writes of how Pendleton and Saunders met and discussed what was best for them to do in so dangerous a season? Fox explains that Saunders was so fearful and feeble-spirited that he showed himself in appearance like either to fall quite from God and his word, which he had taught, or at least to betake him to his heels and to fly the land rather than to stick to his profession and abide by his tackle. But that Pendleton was bold in courage and comforted Saunders and admonished him, telling him that he could not forsake cowardly his flock when he had most need to defend them from the wolf, neither having put his hand to God's plough to start now aside and give it over, nor yet, that is worst of all, having once forsaken Antichrist, to fall either himself or suffer others by his example, to return to their vomit again. He even said, I will see the uttermost drop of this grease of mine molten away and the last gobbet of this pampered flesh consumed to ashes before I will forsake God and his truth. Strong words. Yet, as Fox tells, when the two men arrived in London, it was Saunders who stood firm, mightily beating down Antichrist and lustily preaching Christ his master. While Pendleton the Proud, as Fox calls him, changed his tippet and played the apostate preaching instead of sound doctrine, nothing almost but errors and lies, advancing Antichrist and overthrowing poor Christ with all his mane, becoming a sworn enemy of God. Pendleton turned back to Catholicism while Saunders stayed true to his faith and was burnt as a heretic in February 1555 as a result. I wonder how Pendleton felt on hearing about his friend's execution, particularly as he then reaped the reward for his turn to Catholicism, being made prebendary of Reculverland, canon of St Paul's, vicar of Tottenham in Gloucestershire, canon of Lichfield, vicar of St Martin Outwich in London, and then receiving the living of St Stephen's Walbrook. Pendleton was also appointed as chaplain to Edmund Bonner, Bishop of London, and a man known as Bloody Bonner for his part in the persecutions of heretics in Mary's reign. While serving Bonner, Pendleton took part in disputations with Protestants who'd been arrested. Men like his fellow preacher John Bradford, who he visited in prison. 
According to John Fox, Bradford reminded Pendleton of how Pendleton had once set forth the Reformed faith earnestly, just like he did, and wanted to know what had moved his conscience to alter his faith. Pendleton asked him why he was imprisoned, and Bradford explained that it was due to his beliefs about the sacrament, that he denied that men were really receiving Christ's body. Fox writes, Here, Master Pendleton, half amazed, began to excuse himself if it would have been as though he had not denied fully transubstantiation indeed. And the two went on to debate this. Bradford was burnt at the stake as a heretic in July 1555. Pendleton was famous for his preaching in Mary's reign, preaching to what was said to be 20,000 people on Easter Monday, 1557. However, not everyone enjoyed his preaching. In his ecclesiastical memorials, John Stripe records that when Pendleton preached at St. Paul's Cross on the 10th of June, 1554, a gun was shot off and the bullet went over him and hit the wall. Stripe adds that the shooter was not found and that it was not clear whether it was done by someone out of detestation of Pendleton's doctrine or his person, seeing as he'd been a zealous professor of religion in King Edward's days, which he basely renounced under Queen Mary. Pendleton also contributed two homilies to Bishop Bonner's 1555 book of homilies. Pendleton died sometime in September 1557 and, according to John Fox, at his death, full sore repented that ever he had yielded to the doctrine of the papists. However, his biographer Ellie C. Wooding notes that references to a work now lost entitled A Declaration of Henry Pendleton, D.D. in his sickness of his faith in all points as the Catholic Church teachest against slanderous reports against him suggests that this was a matter of some debate. Did he change his faith once more at his death? We just don't know, but perhaps so. He'd seen his friends and fellow preachers, Saunders and Bradford, go courageously to their deaths, strong in their Protestant faith. Pendleton was buried in his own church, St. Stephen's Walbrook, on this day in 1557. Minister Robert Halley, in his 19th century book, Lancashire, Its Puritanism and Nonconformity, describes Henry Pendleton as an able man, handsome, athletic, possessed of a fine, clear voice, mighty in the management of ready speech and powerful utterance, and writes of how his preaching was in popularity and influence second only to that of John Bradford. Also on this day in Tudor history, Sunday 21st of September 1578, in the reign of Queen Elizabeth I, Robert Dudley, Earl of Leicester, married Latisse Devereux, nay Knowles, in a secret marriage at his house. So secret was it that he only told his chaplain and his friends the day before. Leicester was marrying the woman that Elizabeth I had dubbed the She-Wolf, so he knew that his queen would not be happy. You can find out more about The Secret Wedding and Leicester's Bride in last year's video. You'll find a link to that in the description. Thank you for joining me today. You can subscribe by clicking round about there. You can hit the bell to be notified as these videos go live. And you can give me a like and leave me a comment. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.